A very good morning to you. How are you doing? Welcome back to K24 this morning. To Mamadizana Maneno Interactive, now we get into more serious matters. And today we're talking about redundancy. Now, we're going to be discussing exactly what redundancy is. I know it's a word that has been going around in the country and probably you're asking yourself, what is it? We're going to be breaking down to you in a few minutes. But right now, though, I am joined by um, a few individuals here, starting with one, Abraham Muthogo, who is an economist. Karibu Tanasana. Uh, um, and then we have as well Miriam Tarao, who is a HR professional. Karibu Thank you. And then we have also one Moses Rishu, the co-founder of Africa Spoket. Karibu It's a pleasure having you guys here. Thank you. I'm um, always here. glad to see these faces. I had you a minute ago. Walafu kapotea nikashanga ulienda wapi ni namba yangu nipoteza. Miriam, really? Not really. I've been around, I've been around. Okay. Yeah. Karibu tena sana. Thank you so much. Before I get into the newspaper, because there's something I want to read from here, yeah. maybe you can tell us from an economist point of view, what is redundancy? I think from an economic point of view, mm. in a production process, right. there, are factor, there are factors of production. Right. And one of those factors of production is the human capital. Okay. Now, depending on your level of production mm -hmm. and your technological input in how you produce, the, you, 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 you do the production, right. you'll need more or less of mm -hmm. that resource. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the, the economy now, mm -hmm. there's a slowdown. Okay, a, sl a slowdown. Yeah, a slowdown. Okay. That's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. there's a lot of technological disruption. All right. Take, for example, the banking sector. Mm. The, the, way they are the way they are doing their things now, the other day I was reading that, like for Equity Bank, for example, 97% mm -hmm. of the transactions were right. done outside the bank. That means on our phones, yes, on, on our the phones. internet, yeah. So, yeah. ATM. So, so now you, you can already see what that, what that means for the cashiers. Mm. If, if you look at any other job, mm -hmm. the cashier job is on its way out. All right. So, so redundancy comes when now mm -hmm. that production process needs less of the human capital. All right. So if I don't need it, I don't use it. Okay. So if, 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 if I had 10 and I only need 7, mm -hmm. then, then the 3 have to leave. All right. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that is, put, put bluntly, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Basically, you could get rid of what you don't need. Yeah, so now, you, see, you see, for a producer, yeah. it's about profit. Mm -hmm. I use as little uh, input as possible, produce as much as I can. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Miriam, <coughs> yes. you being a HR uh, professional, Redundancy sounds like a very complex word. Redund redundancy also sounds more or less like an insult, like you're redundant to talk about. It sounds <laughs> harsh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it sounds harsh. Yes. Maybe from your perspective, um, just to put it for someone who might look at redundancy like, guy, imagine I'm no longer needed, how would you, put, uh, how would you describe redundancy? redundancy. Yeah. Actually, it's not also you'd, what you'd call retrenchment, yes. but uh, we call it, it's more or less the involuntary separation of an employee from the organization. Mm -hmm. Involuntary meaning it's no fault of the employee. Yeah. So we can't put them at fault here. Mm -hmm. It's because either the business is changing its dynamic, mm -hmm. it's changing its base, mm -hmm. or actually there's no longer no more funding for okay. to, to, that to position, yeah for yeah. that position or even for the projects. Yeah. A good example it's like the NGOs in Kenya right now. Mm -hmm. Most of them have actually had budget cuts. Okay. Yeah, almost 40 to 60 percent of budget mm -hmm. being cut from their projects. That's 60 to 40 to 60. 40 that's to 60 a budget. Chunk, that's yeah. a huge chunk, and mm -hmm. we are seeing most of them winding up mm -hmm. or facing down. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's what we call the involuntary <coughs> separation. And of course, it's a painful process, but mm -hmm. it's those difficult conversations that, as human resources professionals, have to start having with our employees, mm -hmm. telling them that their position is no longer required within the structure. Wow. And, it's and how soon important. should you start having this conversation with them? Is it um, because I did meet someone who said it's good or rather it's better if you just surprise me one day and tell me movie. <laughs> 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 she came <laughs> Sharaya Mwisho. Uh, no, the surprise element actually will also be against the law mm. because legally we are required to give a one month notice. Okay. Even before we give the one month notice, we are <coughs> supposed to be having these discussions. Right. The minute you know as an organization or as a company mm. that you don't have any funds to support the staff anymore, yeah. Yeah. you need to start preempting with the staff. Have Having okay. open what we call the townhouse <coughs> meetings, mm, mm. and you explain to them in the simplest terms possible mm -hmm. that uh, well, how that the business <laughs> is, you know, the changes <laughs> in the business, yes. and then give them time also to just think about it, mm -hmm. to go and 
you know, delve into it okay. for them to know what it means to okay. them. Mm -hmm. Then thereafter, that's when you can start giving the notices. Because remember, we yeah. have NEA, mm -hmm. the National Employment Authority, okay. and also the Labor Office, which needs to be notified in good time. Mm. So the surprise element here can't work. <laughs> As an organization, you'll be shooting yourself on the foot. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Moses, you, you, you guys are financial um, advisors as far as um, <clears throat> Africa's pot uh, pocket is concerned. Yeah. If you look at the situation right now, uh, I'll be reading an excerpt from the newspaper in regards to that. If you look at the situation right now, is it that the country is broke? Is it that we are, um, you know, because they say about eight major companies have literally cut off about 14,000 employees. Is it that we are, we are doing that badly, Kim Fuko? I don't think it's necessarily a function of the country doing badly. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, industries might go through shifts. Right. Like the betting industry has mm -hmm. just gone through a major shift where some companies are finding it unviable. Okay. In those cases, there will be job losses or technology improvements, like we've just said, in which mm -hmm. case you can, if they've not happened in your bank, they yeah. will happen in some time in the future. Okay. So there are elements of some companies not doing as well, mm -hmm. and there are also elements of te technology just changing. Yeah. Yeah. I think regardless of <coughs> where you are as an employee in any of these industries, it's mm -hmm. important to plan ahead yeah. because job loss could happen at any point, yeah. and that's why we have things like building emergency funds, yeah. right. so that you're covered in cases like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, uh, let me just read uh, what the papers have to say in regards to the redundancy. Um, on page seven of the standard, layoffs immoral, uh, senators saying push for answers, and a Senate committee has opened an investigation into the reasons behind the recent wave of job losses. Now, this follows a petition filed by Kakamega Senator Cleophas Malala that detailed how at least nine companies had recently laid off about 14,000 employees. Um, it goes on to say that the root causes include companies that have laid off staff this year include Stanbic Bank, which let go of more than 200 employees, East Africa Portland 7 company that declared all staff redundant, all the staff, Absolutely. everyone. Yeah. Um, Kenya Airways that fired about 38 employees, and Fingley Flowers in Kiricho where at least 1,700 workers lost their jobs. Uh, it goes on to say in another paragraph that Senate Majority Leader Kipchumba Murkomen, uh, while contributing to the motion, said the complaint across the country is that institutions of government that play oversight roles are among those contributing to the closure of business. Um, you can get all that in uh, uh, your standard page seven. But looking at it from what uh, Senator Murkomen said, yeah. I mean, when she's saying that even the government somehow is contributing to the fact that people have to, for lack of a better word, get fired. You see, <clears throat> this is about economic performance. Mm -hmm. So even if the Senate meets and debates about it, right. we, we eventually have to, to drill down to mm -hmm. the cause the causes of what is driving these job losses. Yes. And there can only be one. What I said by saying, mm -hmm. it's a slowdown in the economic growth. Mm -hmm. And what that, what that portends mm -hmm. is that the household income mm -hmm. is, is starting to dwindle. Okay. Because the when, household, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, like yeah. my household. Now, when your disposable income mm -hmm. f falls, okay. what happens? Your consumption also falls. Mm -hmm. When your consumption falls, you demand less. Mm -hmm. When you demand less, they produce less. Okay. When you produce less, they, they, they mm -hmm. need less factors. Mm -hmm. And those factors have to go home, including the human capital. Right. When that human capital goes home, he comes and, and, makes, and, and joins that cycle. And, right. and it goes another cycle. So, so you can easily be burying yourself into a hole. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is to, is to come up with measures immediately okay. to arrest this situation. Mm -hmm. Because what it means is that uh, certain pockets, if not all of, of the economy, mm -hmm. are not doing as well as they should. Okay. So it's good they're calling it out mm -hmm. as, as, as senators, but I think that you should push it further All right. to, to understand why, mm -hmm. and then more importantly, what can you do to remedy? All right. Yeah. Uh, I want to rope mm -hmm. in the audience into this conversation, and we will ask you the question of the day, which is, is redundancy, in your opinion, um, as a common monarchy, is redundancy a blessing in disguise? Because a lot of opportunities do come from such uh, situations, or mm -hmm. is it a curse? Like, if today you're told by your company, Nenda Home, are you done? And I will actually not come to the HR consultants. <laughs> is laying off people really an option? Or are there other options such as, in my opinion, because I, who wants to get fired? Nobody. Uh, no one. Mm. I, um, especially the fact that you said it's not my fault. Yes. Mm. Is there another option? Like if I was earning 10,000 bob, can I maybe take a pay cut and say, me, I'm willing to live with 7,000 or even 5,000 yes. as we wait for the times to get better? Actually, we provide alternatives. Uh, as I said, when you know that you're not, you're, uh, your organization is not viable in mm -hmm. terms of employing the masses, uh, yeah. 
Uh, we start having those discussions with staff. And first we look at the alternatives even before we can say we are declaring 10, 20, 30 people redundant. Mm -hmm. And some of the alternatives that we look at <coughs> is, one, can we reduce the salaries? Because even staff will come and tell you, okay, mm. how, how much are we short by? How many millions? If that's the case, can the top level and the mid-level managers then take yeah. a pay cut? Mm -hmm. So someone who's earning like 150 will tell you, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't want the person earning 10,000 to go home. Mm -hmm. How about I get 100 and the rest can go to the person on the lower wow. card? Oh, yeah. So people take options of taking a lower salary. Mm -hmm. Secondly, so there's option of consultancy, whereby mm -hmm. you're not a, a full-time employee, mm -hmm. but you opt to be a consultant with no benefits, whereby okay. you're only paid for the services mm -hmm. that you're offering. Mm -hmm. That's also another option. Okay. Yeah. So we look at first the options before we declare. We say now, finally, this is the number of staff that we are mm -hmm. declaring. With a company like East Africa, home. Portland, from what we're reading, literally declared everyone. I'm, I'm assuming even the CEO. Oh, everybody <laughs> went to, the, the meaning board. they were starting afresh. Yeah. yeah. Um, there were no such options in such a company? Well, it probably, as the economists would mm -hmm. say, it, mm. they looked at their books of accounts and probably <coughs> knew they, this has to be call, called for a major reshuffling. Mm. But my guess is that there was going to be change of salary and very huge. Okay. So they needed everybody and probably a, ch a change in the job structure because mm -hmm. if the jade is going to change, mm -hmm. requiring new skills and new competencies, right. it's as good as telling everybody you're going home, you'll yeah. have to reapply afresh what? for these new positions. So ah. it becomes again competitive because mm. remember, uh -huh. there has to be a strategy in which you're laying off positions. Yeah. Okay. Which yes. method are you using? Yes. Mm. Is, oh, it is, the leaf, is it the last thing yes, they passed, passed out? Yes. <laughs> and if you are rehiring, what new competencies or new skills are you looking at yeah. such that the process is, seem, is deemed to be very fair okay. and very open? All right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Moses, um, people are, like in all these nine companies, 14,000 people must they see, see, see Kitukido. Yeah, this, no, this is an entire strange. constituency. One is a, even one is a lot. <laughs> even one yeah, is a lot. Is I mean, 14,000, that's an entire, where I come from, Mikalasa. <laughs> this is actually, I think, Everyone. twice of Mikalasa. <laughs> so <laughs> you can imagine uh, all these 14,000 people, Manzejo, do not have uh, jobs or yeah. options. What are the, wh how, first of all, how do we even see um, such a layoff coming um, in a company? Uh, so there are two parts to your question. One is how do you see it? And two, yeah. whether or not you see it, how do you prepare? All right. So everyone should be preparing mm -hmm. whether or not they see it. Mm -hmm. And you do that by preparing for an emergency fund, which is just how much money do you need to survive three to six months? Okay. Which is a fair enough time for you to figure things out, get your next job, all that stuff. And you should have that money mm -hmm. in a savings account somewhere. So you always have access to it. Mm -hmm. Now back to the question you asked, which yeah. is how do you see it coming? Right. Uh, if you have peer companies in that industry mm -hmm. and you see something happen to one of them, you know, like <laughs> what was just mentioned earlier, banking. Mm -hmm. If one bank is being disrupted by technology, that tech will catch up. Okay. Or if you have industries like, say, manufacturing of, say, foods, as mm -hmm. an example, and you see one of the peer companies starting to crumble a bit mm -hmm. for lack Just of demand. Just know it's catching up. This stuff, exactly. So yeah. trends like that are possible to foresee and be like, this might happen in my industry. Yeah. And in that case, then it's very important to start upskilling mm -hmm. to make sure that should this happen, yeah. A, I'm more valuable to the company that I'm in, mm -hmm. and B, if I must leave, I can deploy my skills elsewhere, yeah. either for myself or for a new company. Right. Is it possible to actually predict, um, like he's saying, because um, <clears throat> he says if you, Bank A starts, you know, uh, crumbling, just know if you're in Bank F, it's chances are you're in Kujiwa. But is it, is it possible to actually even predict this in good time for you to actually prepare for that? You see, uh, and, and I think she, she, she would be in a better position to say this. Mm -hmm. With, with, with the disruption that is actually the banking sector, and, I, and I'm talking about banking sector because that's most, most of my career was in the banking sector. Mm -hmm. When you see that kind of disruption coming, I yeah. think you need to look inwards and look at your, 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 your skill set mm -hmm. in, in terms of relevance going forward. Okay. Like now if you're a cashier, mm -hmm. you know that your, your, your expiry date is, is, is not far. Mm -hmm. Because remember, like if you use the example of Stanley, they laid yeah. off 200. Okay. But I can assure you, if you went there, they have hired new staff. Mm -hmm. So what basically they're probably doing they got is, is 200, yeah, probably 200 yeah. guys who no longer <coughs> fit. Yeah. That the, 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 current, the current model of business mm -hmm. and brought in, like now, we, we, with the kind of uh, technology we have a, the, with, with AI and, 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 and smart systems, mm -hmm. there's such a huge demand for data analysts mm -hmm. that even within that sector, they don't have enough. Don't have wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. I, 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 I've spoken to many of them. They're telling me, if you have a good one, bring him. Mm. So as they're laying these guys off, yeah. they are bringing, mm -hmm. so basically, the, maybe the, the account is not going down, mm -hmm. but it is a mix. Mm -hmm. So for you as a person, you need to evaluate and say, my skill set does not. It's not relevant going forward. And also depending on your age, if I have yeah. two or three years to retire, 
I can take the risk. Yeah. But if I'm 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 24 years, uh -huh. I need to think yeah. in five years. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, because be. like, like if you look at the banking sector, very few, even you as a person, you right. have, in a year you'll go to the bank how many times? Mm -hmm. So it tells even, even the whole model of, if your job is in the brick and mortar, mm -hmm. then you know that there's just a matter of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, do we have a phone call? Joshua from Kirinyaga. Good morning, Joshua. Movie, good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning to the panelists. Morning. morning. Joshua, uh, Leo inaka umechanga mkia yeah. kahawa. <laughs> Nisha jitibu tafata ya, Nisha pata kia mshakinywa. All right. <laughs> Nashukuru mungu. Sasa, allow me to contribute on the topic on money and finances, eh? Please do. A and allow me to touch on the redundancy. Now, there is a problem we have in our country, movie. Yes. We are one country that is used to euphemisms that mm. we never want to call things by their names. Yeah. That's why it's only in Kenya whereby we call prostitutes socialites. Okay. Oh my God. We call we call foolish politicians controversial politicians. Okay. And con men in Kenya are called flamboyant controversial businessmen. Now yeah. redundancy in very simple words is simply simply means that uh, you are you, you are unwanted. Mm -hmm. That you have been fired. Yes. And instead of using very colorful language trying to describe why companies undergo redundancy and restructuring. Right. When you see a company uh, restructuring, it simply means that the company, uh, the company's fortunes are going south. Okay. That the company is unable to maintain its workforce. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether or, or, or on how to cope with uh, tough times when uh, you are declared redundant or fired. Yes. I think there is no better lesson on this. It's only one thing that mtu wakai ngumu. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way things are, are happening in our country, Mbuvi. Yes. I think every person who purports to be employed in a corporate right. should brace themselves for tougher times because things are not good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joshua. Uh, okay, Joshua has clearly put it blunt. Yes. Um, he's not mincing his words. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, no one would shut down a company that yes. is making profits. No one. No one. Mm -hmm. And for a company like you know, East Africa Portland to lay off everyone, clearly things were bad. Things were bad, yeah. And in this particular situation, uh, the employees had almost zero to no options uh, in regards to how they can cushion themselves. But maybe is there a way even the HR departments of companies can prepare their staff and tell them, look, guys, in three months, we're actually shutting down. Is there a way they can actually even prepare them psychologically so that people don't end up, you know, killing themselves? Yes. Uh, or getting into, sorry. you know, mental, whatever, um, Breakdowns. health. Yeah. yeah. Certainly, yes. And that's where we are there. We are human resources, human capital, meaning we are, the, the people <coughs> are the most important even before the assets in the company. Right. So we, mind, we are very mindful of the people in the company. And how we can start preparing is, for me, I prefer the face, the slow face off of employees whereby you're not gradually sending everybody home, mm -hmm. but you're gradually just streamlining and sending batches of staff home. Okay. And of course, first by preparing them. We have counselors who come in to actually take our staff through the one-on-one -on -one sessions. Mm -hmm. It's hard, we are mm -hmm. living in harsh economic okay. times. Yeah. By the way, it's not easy for most people. Mm -hmm. If all of us were to go to the street and talk about the challenges that yeah. we are having as far as finances are concerned, mm -hmm. you know, it would be huge, enormous. Just hold on to that though, because we have a Regan on the line. Regan, good okay. morning. Hello. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. What is your question or comment? Yes. Uh, good, good morning. Yes, Regan. Mundalangi uh, Mukosalama? Uh, yes, Regan. Nakuski and Lea. Uh -huh. Okay, we have lost Regan. But you were saying? Yes, so we start preparing them by mm. having a counselor actually mm. at the workplace where one on one sessions are mm. conducted with employees. Because remember, they have questions mm. that they need answers to. Mm. They need, they'll, be, they'll be asking the why and the why and the why. And of course, the business is like we are cutting down, the business is not doing good. Mm -hmm. So we take them through also financial management. As far as taking care of the mental capacity is, we take care of their financial management, meaning this staff will go home with a a, a good sum of money. We're talking about the severance pay, we're talking about their pension and all the final dues that we, that packages, the, the final package as they go home. Mm. They'll have a lot of money. What do they do with that money? Yeah. Are they able to utilize it in the best way possible such that yeah. it's not more of just losses 
they go to into immediately yes. they leave their workplace yes. but they're able to go into a profitable business okay. where already they've started preempting on what what they need to do all right yeah okay mm. um moses yep. sometimes you can literally be caught off guard as much as she said that there are options i mean there are, there's a process where nair has to be informed and you have to be told and you know given options and so on and so forth but sometimes it is so sudden that you literally do not have time probably you had loans uh, that you had taken in the name of the company dude three months <laughs> i'm a one month man <laughs> and yet your loan is two years yeah what do you do um really great question mm -hmm. uh Again, just reiterating that everyone who's not yet laid off, mm -hmm. make it a very big priority starting today to build an emergency fund. Okay. Yeah. It's the biggest thing that you can do to protect yourself, regardless mm -hmm. of when you ever get laid off or if you ever get laid off. Now, if you are laid off, you need to very rapidly scale back because of things like loans. So if you have loans, you need to figure out, one, can I negotiate with the people who I owe mm -hmm. to, to, for example, stop accruing interest? Mm -hmm. Because the thing that'll trap a lot of people is it's people not, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys don't go back and negotiate and that interest keeps building. And someone might not know you lost your job. Yeah. All they know is my money's due in a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, then you true. get late fees and more late fees. And that becomes very trapping. So mm -hmm. negotiate first with these people. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, if you do get money uh, yeah. as a severance package, yeah. then be very intentional about how you use that. Okay. Right? Can I just hold you on that part because we have a Joshua from Nairobi. Joshua, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. What is your question or comment? My question is, if you go, I went to work and asked for my PH days, but yeah. I was forced to resign. Mm -hmm. Is that legal? Uh, you were told to, you went to your work and you were told to do what? I asked for a PH leave, but I was forced to resign. Is what? that legal? You, you asked for leave? Yes. yes. And, then you are, and then you were fired? Yes. Uh, is that legal? Uh, that's not legal. It's actually. not legal. Did you? Yeah. How long ago was this? It was just like two days, so I didn't resign. So I'm still struggling, so wondering what to do. All right. Um, Miriam will answer your question in a minute. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll definitely answer okay. his question, but mm -hmm. you were saying something. Um, emergency fund. Exactly. So yes. first, emergency fund. Two, if you have any loans, negotiate mm -hmm. them so that you, for example, stop accruing interest and maybe mm -hmm. even defer when you start paying them again. Mm -hmm. And three, if you do get a severance package of whatever sort, yes. be very intentional about how you use it. Yes. Now, a mistake a lot of people make mm -hmm. is, I got my severance, I'm going to start a business. Mm -hmm. But you've never been in business before. Yeah. That's a very high risk thing for you to do. There's a very big chance that you uh -huh. lose your money. Okay. Whereas if you'd, for example, while at working at your job, been trying out a couple of different skills, yes. you know what people will pay you for. Okay. For example, yes, you're here, but mm -hmm. you may make a phenomenal MC. Yes. yes, and you've been doing that. Mm -hmm. So you know that when you lose your job, you can go out and try being an MC, yeah. and you're not trying this I'll thing for the first time. I have to ask you to get married every Saturday now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. But the point is, you've you've tried in the past yeah. and identified a way in which you can generate income. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're not trying this for the first time with all your money. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The money you do get, you need to be mm -hmm. quite conservative with it, so it lasts you as long as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, just the to add on to that, mm -hmm. we're having very many people trying new businesses immediately. They're out. Yes. yes. And then they learn. Oops, two million has just sunk into the deep of the exactly. water. Yeah. So you need to be multi-skilled such that even if you're a project manager or a cashier in a mm -hmm. bank, have something on the side that is already going, such that when you're finally out, you just continue. You'll be pumping in ca extra capital. Yes. yes. Yeah, but okay. not trying a new, a new uh, project yes. that you actually know nothing about. I feel you like see, it's yeah, Because it's true. You see, when you're employed, yeah. your mind is an employee. Right. Mm. And I'm not saying this with any disrespect to anyone. Mm -hmm. When you come out, you cannot switch to be an entrepreneur overnight. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that the best transition would be, if you're given some money, p place it in something that will give you passive income. Okay. So as you, as you start getting uh, the proverbial, what was it? Because you're a in a year. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and that's, that's important. So, oh, so, yeah. so, so then uh, as you're getting used to that kind of life, yeah. then you can now start putting your feelers. Because most of us have very busy jobs. Mm. To the extent that you're always in this studio, you don't know what actually goes out on yes. Kijabi Street. Okay. To the day mm. they throw you out, and That's then when you and discover guys. Yeah, and, and then you want to put up, um, you want to put a vegetable shop, yeah. a, a, a meat shop, yes. only for you to realize that all, all these guys here are vegetarians, and yes. because you don't know, because you see them. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so it's very important that you go mm. through a transition from right. employee and to entrepreneur. I want us to talk about that transition when we come back from the break, and then of course we shall answer that gentleman who said that he was fired after asking for uh, for paid, paid leave, or leave. was it unpaid leave or yeah. something? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So we we take a short break, but the question that we asked you was. Um, is redundancy a blessing in disguise? Yeah, um, if you look at it from that perspective, because right now we understand 14,000 Kenyans laid off suddenly just like that. Uh, what, what is the next option? So do you look at this as a blessing in disguise or are you done?
that's how I would put it bluntly. So uh, let's take a short break and then of course we shall talk about the options that we have and find out that guy who was fired, was that illegal? We'll be right back.